Good evening, church. It's time for our midweek update once again, and I've got a couple of good announcements, uh, so things uh, to let you know what's been going on around here. We've had a little bit of activity going on this week. Uh, Quinn Martin's been here in his official capacity as, as the owner of Quinn's Heat and Air, along with some others on a uh, crew that he brought with him, and uh, they've replaced two of our air units over in the multi-purpose building. Uh, this is a part of our maintenance on this facility. We've had we have uh, somewhere in the neighborhood 20, 25, 24 uh, heat and air units in our facility, and many of them are kind of reaching the end of their life cycle. Uh, we've been blessed to have enough money to replace a couple of them uh, that have completely quit working, and Lord willing, those units will give us many years of service. Uh, that activity kept things hopping around here for at least a couple of days. Today, some of our men came up and put up a new flag on our flagpole to replace the one that was unfortunately stolen last week. And they've taken measures to make it much more difficult for it to be stolen again. So a big thank you to the guys who worked on that. And even now, more of our men are here mowing lawns and shaping up hedges, keeping things looking good. We have so many faithful uh, volunteers who volunteer their time to keep our facilities looking good and working well. Please offer up a prayer of thanks for these men and women who work hard when few are around to notice. Um, let me give you a report on Sunday, how things went. Sunday was our first service back together and things went very well. We had 55 people in the seats uh, during the first service and 54 during the second service. Uh, those are just the ones in the seats, not counting uh, the deacons and the, the ones on stage and, and others that are around. But uh, when you add everyone in, that puts us somewhere around 120 to 125 people for our first Sunday back. Uh, that's a really good uh, start back. We still have several people um, who are still staying home because uh, they are in that at-risk population, different ones that have health issues, um, age issues, things that uh, make them not um, safe yet to be in uh, large public gatherings. And uh, so they're staying home and that's perfectly okay. Lord willing, this thing will be behind us soon and we'll finally be able to join back together as a family to worship together, to pray together, and to encourage one another. Some good praises, some good things have been going on and we need to praise the Lord for them. Um, Nicole Reynolds is home and doing well and in fact got very good uh, results from a recent test. The doctors have expressed that Nicole has uh, beaten the odds. Not many survive what she has been through, but she's doing very well and is on track to make a complete recovery. Please keep her in your continued prayers as she continues to go through the process of uh, them dissolving all these blood clots that are formed in her body uh, and getting her system regulated through medicine so this doesn't happen again. Uh, another thing, some good things have come about uh, in the unfortunate uh, tragedy surrounding Brady Ballard's niece's death. Uh, God is still working there and blessing tremendously. Uh, you can check our uh, church family Facebook page. Brady's put a couple of uh, updates in the, in the comments in that uh, to keep us uh, informed on what's going there. So uh, God's working. He's doing wonderful, wonderful things in our church. Uh, things are still uh, moving forward and growing and going. Uh, in spite of this pandemic that we've been through and all of the unrest that's going on around us now, God is still blessing, He's still working, and we're so thankful for that. A couple of prayer requests for you to remember. Please continue to remember Ron Burks in your prayers as he recovers from surgery. Uh, and pray that uh, the infection in his toe uh, that they cleaned out will completely heal up and that he will be able to get back on his feet uh, again very quickly. Uh, continue to pray for Sherry, who is Pat Roberts' daughter. Uh, she recovers from COVID-19 and pray for Pat and Jerry. Uh, Sherry is right there near them next door. Uh, they've been keeping socially distanced from her as much as possible, uh, but just uh, both of them uh, have health issues that make them at extreme risk should they get COVID-19. So just pray that God protects them all and uh, that they will stay clear of it and that uh, Sherry recovers quickly. Uh, pray for Brother Scott and Esther. You, you might notice that this is me today, not Brother Scott. Uh, they are in Pennsylvania right now, helping their daughters get moved. And uh, uh, so just pray for them and for the girls as they're, they're moving them out of their apartment and into some other places. And uh, just pray for their safe travels back. Uh, Brother Scott uh, should be traveling back on Saturday and be with us on Sunday, uh, Lord willing, if everything works out. Um, Brother Daniel will be preaching this coming Sunday, uh, so uh, be also in prayer for, for Brother Daniel as he's preparing to do that. Uh, and again, pray for Scott and Esther as they're traveling back. 
Okay, now there's been some games on this thing, and I thought, well, I'll just do a game too. So, um, why not? Uh, let's play What's Missing. Right now, you can look around me, and I will give you 10 seconds to study my surroundings, and then I will remove something. And then let's see if you can figure out uh, what I have moved and you can put that in comments or uh, on the church uh, family uh, Facebook page and uh, we'll, uh, we'll just see. So you got 10 seconds to look around me, see what's on my, on my shelves and uh, then I will move something. Let's see if you can figure out what I've moved. Here we go. Ready, set, go. Okay, now I will move something. Let's see if you can figure out what it was. All right, it's gone. Can you tell what's missing? You can pause the video here and look around if you'd like. See if you can figure out what I've moved. And uh, you can post it in the comments or in, again on the church Facebook page. Uh, but now it's time for our devotional. So once you've paused and looked around and figured out what's going on, uh, hit play again and let's continue on. We'll study God's word together. Good evening, church. Um, we're going to look a little bit at a proverb tonight. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what a proverb is uh, just for a moment, and then we'll look at this particular proverb, which um, I believe has very, very um, strong words for us uh, in this time that we're facing right now. Uh, we'll look at Proverbs chapter 15, just the first verse. Um, that, that, that proverb there, Proverbs chapter 15 Verse 1 says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. I think you can probably see why I chose that. It um, very much applies to what's going on, on the new, in the news today and uh, in the world around us, even in our own neighborhoods. Uh, people are frustrated, and rightly so. People are um, angry, uh, and they're allowing their emotions to, to run wild. Uh, saying things that you know may or may not be true some of them are true but even sometimes when we say things that are true we'll say it with such animosity that it stirs up uh, other people to be angry and and it just kind of becomes this uh, downhill tumble that's that's hard to stop and so what are we as Christians supposed to do how are we supposed to uh, to respond how are we supposed to act and I think this proverb gives us some, some pretty good advice in how to do that. Um, first of all, what are proverbs? Proverbs, well, West, West, Webster defines proverbs as a brief popular epigram or maxim. And then it says adage, just an, an old saying, pretty much just what it is. Um, in the biblical sense, uh, Webster's defines it as a collection of moral sayings and counsels forming a book of canonical Jewish and Christian skip scripture. And that's a pretty decent definition of what the book of Proverbs is. In essence, a proverb is a saying that expresses something that's generally true, though not always, in a way that's witty and concise so it's easy to remember. Um, little quips and quotes. Um, even little fortune cookie things, all of those are kind of proverbial statements. Um, but the ones in the Bible are ones that are, again, things that are generally true. They don't always apply to every situation. They're, they're, some things are not always true um, as far as what the, the way the Proverbs read, uh, different ones. They, again, it's true here, it's not there, uh, because they are sayings of the wise, which is what way it's uh, said in Proverbs 1.6. It says that these are the words of the wise and their riddles, uh, according to the modern English version. And so they're, they're not, um, Proverbs were not given to be foundation blocks for doctrine. Uh, it was never intended that these would be uh, foundational stones on which we build certain doctrines. No, these are um, very, very good words of advice from very, very wise men, uh, good counsel, wise counsel. Uh, and these are, these are men who've been given wisdom by God 
and, uh, and we can trust the wisdom in this. And again, you have to take it though for what it is, not, not foundational stones for doctrine, but just good, wise counsel in how we should live our lives. So the wise words that are given in Proverbs 15.1 are these, A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So in light of things going on, uh, these are very wise words indeed. There are three important things that I want to look at tonight, just very quickly, um, that I think we can, we can glean from, from that and from other places in Scripture. Uh, the first one is, number one, think before you speak. <laughs> How many times have you heard that, that statement made? Think before you speak. When we allow our emotions to take uh, charge of us, when we allow um, just that, that human nature to boil up in us, we tend to uh, explode uh, you know, with words and say things that sometimes later we regret. Uh, sometimes the, th the things we say are right and they're true, but they could have been spoken a much better way. Um, Psalm 34, 10 through 14 says, Who is the man who desires life and loves a long life in order to see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So stop, think before you speak. Number one, think about God. How would God want you to express yourself? When you're about to say something, wait. How would God want me to say this? That's a very important thing. Number two, think about others. How can you express the love of Christ in your words? We're supposed to, to you know, be the love of Christ to the world. They'll know we're Christians, the Bible says, by our love. So if, if our words are filled with hate and anger and malice, then they, they get a very confusing picture of who Jesus is. So how can we say what needs to be said, but say it in a way that expresses the love of Christ to others? Think about God, think about others, and think about your testimony, number three. Will what you're about to say make it easier or more difficult for you to share Jesus with the person you're talking to? And how about others that hear what you say? So if, if what you're saying or typing um, is something that later is going to hinder your ability to share the gospel with somebody, you really need to rethink about what you're going to say. Number two, the second major thing, pray before you speak. Think before you speak. Pray before you speak. Psalm 19, 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. 2 Peter 4, 11 says, If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone serves, let him serve with the strength that God supplies, so that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Speaking as the oracles of God. In other words, anything you say as a spiritual representative of God on earth, the ambassador to the earth for Christ, should be spoken as if Jesus is saying it himself. Those are very, very, very important important uh, things to think about. When you're about to speak, remember, you represent Christ to the world. So what are people hearing from Christ when they're listening to you? Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6, Continue in prayer and be watchful with thanksgiving while praying also for us that God would open to us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains, that I may reveal it clearly as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, wisely using the opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer everyone. So no matter what um, you're saying, no matter to whom it is you're talking, um, always make sure that, number one, You've prayed about what you're about to say. Even just those short prayers, uh, Lord, help me say this right. Very quickly, with a close relationship with God, God will listen and He'll help you with that. So seek, number one, the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Call on Him to speak through you. Reach out, Lord, help me say this right. I need to say this, but I need to say it right. Help me say it right. Holy Spirit, guide my mouth. 
Very, very important. Number two, call on God to calm you down and protect you from damaging your testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, please help me to calm down, to relax, to think this through and say this well. And three, ask for the proper words. Let God guide guide your mind and your mouth. Lord, give me the words to say. That's very, very, very important. The third thing, just don't speak. Sometimes the best thing is to just keep your mouth shut. I know it's difficult. It's hard for me. Uh, I really like to talk. Ask anybody who knows me, they'll tell you I like to talk. But when the time comes, we need to have the wisdom just to keep our mouth closed. Um, 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 through 12. I love the way the NIV puts this. It says, and make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands just as we told you so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent upon anybody. Make it your ambition in life to just lead a quiet life. Mind your own business. Sometimes we don't need to get into other people's business. We live in a world where everybody puts everything on social media and everybody has an opportunity to chime in and comment on it. And 90% of the people have absolutely no idea what context in the, that is, is going on with, with what's going on. And they don't even know how to answer. And yet they answer anyway because we have the freedom of speech to be able to speak into other people's lives. If we are going to speak into other people's lives, we need to make sure that we are speaking the truth, that we are speaking the truth in love, and that we are representing Christ well. Sometimes we don't know enough to speak, so it's better just to keep your mouth closed. James chapter 3, verse 8 through 10 says, But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who are made in the image of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. We just shouldn't be that way. When all you've got left to say is something hurtful, don't say it. Just let it go. 1 Corinthians 6, 5-7 through says, I speak to your shame. Is it true that there is not even one wise man among you who shall be able to judge between his brothers? But brother goes to law against brother, and before unbelievers at that. Now therefore, it is already an utter, it's, um, it is already an utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. And then he says this, Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be defrauded? Rather than make God look bad, You should rather just be wronged. Let somebody do you wrong. At least Jesus is glorified. That's a hard line to take, and it's really, really hard to swallow. It's a bitter pill to swallow. But when we're going to represent Christ, sometimes, number one, it's best just to keep your mouth shut. Number two, ask yourself, will my answer change anything, or will it potentially make things worse? Number three, Am I in a catch-22 where no matter what I say, it'll be wrong? If any of those things are true, just don't say it. Just let it go. It's it's better to be wronged. It's better to make yourself look like a fool that Christ be glorified than to um, assert your opinion and get it out there and make yourself feel better and yet make Christ look bad. And if you must speak, if there is something that has to be spoken, sometimes there are. Some things cannot be left alone, and we must speak up. But if we must, we go back to point one, think before you speak. Point two, pray before you speak. It's very, very critical because we represent Christ. And listen to me when I say this. All of this also applies most definitely to social media. Think before you type. Pray before you type. And sometimes, just don't type. You don't have to put your opinion out there for everybody to read. Because honestly, the rest of the people that are out there are much more interested in sharing their opinion than they are hearing yours. You can put it out there. It might make you feel better. 
but ultimately it's probably not doing any good. Um, if there's a time when you must speak though, think first, pray first, then let it be out there. Bear in mind with the internet, typed words cannot be expressed with inflection. You might say something with a thought of a little joke in your mind. It's like, oh yeah, I'm just kidding when I, you know. But we express a lot through the, the, um, the way we say things. And you type those words and someone reads them, they can read them any way they feel. And if they're already in a bad mood, they might read what you typed in a bad way when you didn't mean it in a bad way. So it's very, very important to be careful what you type and how you type and make sure that what you type expresses what you truly mean. Uh, even have somebody else read over it before you hit post. It's a good idea. Also, remember that once something's on the internet, it never goes away. These things are stored in multiple computers all over the world, and your words can and will come back to haunt you, especially the ones you really wish you hadn't said. Um, so it's better just not to put it out there unless you just have to. So the, the, the um, encouragement here and through all of this is may we use our words to carefully further the kingdom of God and never use them to hurt others because, as the proverb says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Oh, may God use our mouths to express the glorious things of Christ and use our minds and our hearts to give us the wisdom when to speak and when not to speak. If we can learn that, um, we will be a lot better off and the kingdom of God will be furthered through us because we speak truth. Church, I encourage you to pray. I encourage you uh, to continue on. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing you again this Sunday. Uh, Lord willing, this thing is going to come to an end and we're all going to be able to come back together in one service, everybody together, <laughs> without masks, without restrictions. Hopefully that's coming soon. Uh, pray for that. Pray that God will open those doors so that we can get back to doing ministry uh, full time the way that we should. Uh, love you guys. Pray that God blesses each and every one of you. Mm -hmm.